And we're the, we're the ACT Network. We're here uh, to ask the sheriff to stop honoring ice holds. And before we keep going, I really wanted to show you guys this lovely blow up of the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office mission statement. Because, uh, because we really feel that right now the mission statement isn't being fulfilled. Let me, <clears throat> let me clear my throat a little bit. <laughs> let, me, let me read this for you. The vision. Exemplary service for a safe, livable community. Our mission, our commitment is to provide quality, cost-effective uh, cost effective prevention, intervention, and detention services to the communities of Monoma County. We will improve the quality of life by reducing crime and the fear of crime through innovation, partnership, and teamwork. Does this seem to be happening right now? Are you seeing this happening right now? In fact, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing be afraid. We're seeing people not want to leave their houses because they're afraid of the police. There's no trust with the police. Let me tell you something. Just the other day, I got a call from a woman named Dalia. Sweetest little lady I've ever seen in my life. She has these two kids, one is seven and one is five, and they were playing in the apartment at her house. And her neighbor, who, um, you know, who's, who's a citizen, she's, she's one of the neighbors here, up, right up uh, on um, 122nd in Burnside is where they live. She hit one of the little kids. And so Dalia, of course, being you know, a worried mom, she called the police and asked them for help. And they came to, you know, to see what was going on with the situation. And instead of, of doing anything about the woman that hit her kids, they looked at Dalia and asked her where she was from. Oh, and you want to know what happened to Dalia? She got put in an ice hold not doing anything, protecting her children when her neighbor was the one that actually hurt her kids. What kind of a community is that? What kind of trust are we trying to, it, to create in our communities when there is no trust? Well, we can't even call the police when we're in trouble. That's not the kind of place we want. And this mission statement means nothing right now because of that, because of stories like that. What I have been working on, and I have been working on very diligently for quite some time now, is trying to make a determination of where my legal authority is at, what it is that I am supposed to do by law. And there's been some <clears throat> extreme difficulties getting a response from the federal government with regards to what it is I'm supposed to do. I have the same difficulties that you're faced with when you're trying to get an answer from our federal government on this particular issue. I wanted to share that we're all here because this is an extremely urgent issue. And it's, it's very frustrating when dialogue is used as a way to keep this going. And then we don't hear for months and months from the sheriff about the next step. Because we can't wait anymore, and we're not going to wait anymore. You should be aware that this is something that does concern me. I have not ignored this trying to get a response from someone. We have been working on it almost continuously. This has taken up much more time than I ever expected it to. I'm what you're going to get today. You can't, uh, he's not going to be with you today. Um, because, like I said, he feels like he's already you know, invested in a couple hours in this conversation. He's got more information to consider. Mm -hmm. I'm very surprised that I can't get an answer from the federal government on this particular issue. This, the, the way the law is written, trying to determine is whether or not I have to or I don't have to comply with the regulation as stated under the federal government, I'm not getting an adequate response. So the sheriff's not going to meet with us. Uh, he said that he's going to give us a response today, but as we hear, he doesn't have a response today because he's got more information and this meeting is going to play a role in that decision making, so he doesn't have that response. I've got a meeting up and coming very shortly on that, and my decisions as to what direction that this office will take from that point forward will be made on Monday. I have to make that decision one way or another, and that answer should be coming in later meetings this week. I want you to know that I was in the midst of a meeting when you got here about this one particular issue, and this has been going on since about 1 o'clock. And like I said, there, there are certain things that I'm trying to get an answer to. Liability issues, or uh, the second is to what level of compliance am I supposed to be called? I'm Reverend Lynn Spouse Lopez and I was in the room with the sheriff last Wednesday and I'm very confused and very frustrated 
that he did invite us back today to talk to us personally. And then I heard that he told Marco after the meeting, this earlier meeting, to come back at 3, I will speak with you. And so that, that really is very disappointing and frustrating. Um, even if he came and said, I still don't have an answer, that's at least respecting mm -hmm. his commitment to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, yeah. I, I wasn't invited to the group at 12. I wasn't on that list, but uh, he did invite me back this afternoon, and um, I am disappointed. With regards to federal laws and regulations? Well, we would like to suggest that until you get a definitive what you're looking for from the federal government, to not cooperate. Because, well, and that's the, the because lives are at stake. And that's the response I plan on having by Monday. I've got to make a decision one way or another on Monday whether or not I've got an adequate response or not. I've already decided this for myself. It's not something that I've felt pressured into. It's just a decision I've got to make for the community I serve. Whether or not you, you believe that I'm right in this, in this action that I'm taking, I've got to make a decision come Monday one way or another. I tried to do the right thing and to do the proper thing by trying to check into this adequately taking the requests that have been made by you and try to get, trying to get an adequate response so that I can respond to you. I guess the frustrating part is we've heard dialogue many, many times today, and it's just not possible to have dialogue if it's not direct and in person. So the dialoguing through others is not as trustworthy. It just uh, doesn't show the same good faith. I'm getting very frustrated just as you're getting frustrated because whether you know it or not, I'm very sympathetic to this. Very sympathetic to the plight of the citizens of this county, to the situations that you're facing right now. And please understand that that's very important. The only reason we have not set up any previous meetings since you were here last is simply because I've gotten no response. I've addressed this issue with other sheriffs in the state of Oregon, and we, we there's just been no conclusion. My name is Nicole Brown. I'm a concerned community member. I work with the Center for Intercultural Organizing, and I would like to know what else the sheriff needs to see when so many different affidavits and so many different things have come out showing that ice holes are not mandatory by law nationally, and so how else he needs to be proven. If he says he wants to follow the law, it's been proven that it's not the law. I'm allowing a couple of the agencies that I'll be meeting with this week to provide me with information. <laughs> If uh, the uh, information is not adequate, and I haven't got an adequate response, you're going to see the decision made by this office more directly. Just to, clear, just to clarify, the decision on Monday is to, to, to talk about honoring not honoring ISOs? Monday? Yes, we're going to be having a discussion, yes. Uh, the the uh, a meeting has been scheduled by the chair to okay. discuss this issue. But, but the decision is going to be definitely just to say, like, we are not going to or we are going to continue. Is that right? We'll be outlining what it is that we'll be doing at that. Okay, and then uh, part of it is also looking at the proposal that was uh, uh, put on your table by the by the Act Network. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and then um, so so how do how do so my question to you is like where do you stand on it? On 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 ISO like do you because you say you're personally going to make that decision. That, well, meaning that you have you can have, you need to make your own uh, you need to make that decision, but where do you stand at? Well, right now my stance is, is that I comply with law, both federal and state law. And I will continue to do so. I'm obligated to do so. <clears throat> but with regards to how this is going to trans transpire on Monday, those answers will be given to me as this week progresses in the meetings I'll be attending. So and how, how do we how, how are we going to know that um, you're going to uh, uh, an announcement? Uh, I've got a response prepared. Okay. Uh, one is is that people have been sending me emails, quite a few, as a matter of fact, and I've read every one of them. Uh, there will be an email blanket that will be sent out in response to everyone that has sent me an email on this particular issue. So that will be going out by email, which I'm sure will hit your website to cover that aspect. One of the act group organizers said we were involved in a dialogue meeting today that went about two hours. Screw's mm -hmm. position, my position, the sheriff's position is very effective. Um, and it was made to, to stay in that dialogue. Mm -hmm.
Um, yes. So I did, I, I did get a chance to talk to the chair. He feels like for today, he's made his payments and, and he's received information. So some of the information he has is new, or is newer than it was before. So he's going to have to consider that he's actually talking to some folks about, about that right now. So that, that's true, because uh, right now we have to wait again for another answer, for, for an answer. And while we're waiting, uh, these things keep happening, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the that's what uh, the lady was what was saying. And I want to repeat uh, what uh, one of um, my friends were was was saying, but in a formal question: When do you think it's gonna be an answer? When when do you think he's gonna be able to give an answer? Important um, issue that we want to highlight is that, uh, like Mr. Ramirez said, that another community member was mentioning that this program is not mandatory and it's really important to restore the trust that is lost through these programs in our community. Um, there's a lot of people who, that are victims of crime that are scared to make those phone calls to reach out to those resources because that, uh, time and time and again they're caught up in deportation proceedings and we see a lot of low priority crimes or just people that are caught up in situations that are torn away from their communities and don't have the ability to spend such a valuable time of the year, this holiday, with their loved ones. And that not only affects their immediate family but our community because they're, it doesn't matter if the legal status, they're a valuable member of our community. And so when we, we see that hurt in our community, we come together like we are coming today to really have our elected officials be accountable to our communities and to really provide that trust and those resources like mission statements that this department has, right? We want to collaborate. We want to build these partnerships with our offices, our sheriff office, our <coughs> police station. But we can't do that when there's this compliance going on with high schools because that dangers our community and we're here because we want to work with you and we want to let you know how much our communities are suffering. Mm -hmm. That we would like to, like today is being expressed, is that we want to see him face to face and continue the dialogue. Uh, dialogue happens when we are face to face and if, if that doesn't happen it's not, it's not, it's not a dialogue, right? So, um, and that we're very concerned about that. We've been waiting for three years already that we've been studying this dialogue. Right. Uh, and uh, and the, the previous time uh, we waited about three months without any response. And uh, so what I will say is, is that you know uh, a number of times the sheriff told us that he's going to give us a response or that he's going to meet with us. And uh, a number of times he didn't do that. So I I hope that you, you share with the sheriff that the next time that he's going to wait for us and he's going to meet with us. And I hope that that's not going to happen. A very, in a very long time from today. So I would appreciate if you ask the sheriff that he takes the initiative and tell us and give us a, a, a date for me uh, within a month. And, and so and you can agree that although there have been times when we have it, that there also been times when we have it. I know that I've yes. with you all, yeah. um, you know, with the sheriff in, yes. in, 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 you know, in his office. And so there's a, there's a way for us to, to do that. And so could, are you in contact for that? Yes, I am. I expect to have a very definitive answer for you by next Monday. So we will be waiting for a response when. And the suggestion is that we don't meet, we don't, we don't want to meet in six months or three months. Within a month, I think, is a good time to meet. You know, with the holidays and all of that. But within a month, that we can be able to sit down and, and continue that dialogue. Thank you. We can carry that message forward. The same that I want the sheriff to be mindful and respectful, respectful of everyone's time because they came here. Mm -hmm. I have a very definitive answer for you by next Monday. Uh, assuming that he's going to be here, and that's, I just felt that it was very disrespectful of the community's members' time to take out their own time to come here out of their own work schedule or their own personal time that they could be, uh, you know, doing. this is something that we care about. And so just pass that message out to him that be mindful and respectful of the community's time and, and uh, and uh, efforts for coming here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just noticing that we're getting a lot of messages. Um, so it would be helpful for me and maybe other folks here if you could kind of reflect back what you heard us say.
Thank you. We'll do that today. I think between the three of us here, we got your message. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do for everyone to know is we're going to write it down, what, what we just said here, we come up here okay. there too, yeah. and we're going to share that with the sheriff, and, and ask him also uh, on top of what you, you know, you're going to have that conversation with the sheriff. Okay. Is that okay? My, the frustrating part, and really, really hurts me here, is the fact that last week, my dad was here meeting with the sheriff, to talk about this issue. When they keep talking about, hey, let's come back, let's have dialogue, let's set up an agenda. We already know that that's not gonna work, which means that community members are being deported. And for us to be here and for him to not, you know, confront us or, you know, give back his answer is so disrespectful. So I think, you know, we need to continue the pressure. And I think, you know, uh, dialogue is, uh, it only gets us enough uh, so far. Since you're here, I don't know if you have, how, how much I'll time do you as have? Much time as you Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anything else? And the sheriff's got another pending right. matter. So if we're reaching an actual conclusion point, we'll take as, as much time as we need. I don't know if that changed already. So, so yeah. it's just to confirm, so Monday we're definitely going to hear something. Monday right? there will be something coming out with regards to this particular issue. I think that uh, the community, um, more than the 50 faith leaders and organizations that have signed uh, the letter that was sent to you, um, are not very happy about not getting any response from you. 